Universal Yum's time. Yay! Look what they did to our box. Look yeah, what they did to our, our beautiful box boy. Has, has wings. We are like holding it together on the sides. <laughs> they did to our beautiful boy. Yeah, look at this. It came like this. We're pretty sure all the snacks are inside, though. But we'll have to find uh, out. We might be missing one or two. Uh, hopefully not. Uh, I, we already know where it's from. We're pretty sure it's from Greece. Uh, because... Spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers. Is it? Greece! Hey, look at that! We're psychic. We nailed it. Welcome to Greece. Oh, and a sticker! Oh! Hercules! It's Hercules! Hercules! <laughs> when I say Hercules, you say body oil! <laughs> Hercules! Body oil! Corn puffs, peanuts, and hazelnut. Whoa, wait. Is that going to be sweet or savory? Next. It's a snacks. We won't know until we taste it. Talk these snacks. There's, um... There's a sunflower and peanut. Oh, I like the smell of this. That is going to be sweet, I think. Oh, they're huge. There's they a big pop. They're gigantic. They're short and stout. They're like little barrels. Barrel puffs. Barrel puffs. Ow. Oh. What the heck? <laughs> whoa. The aftertaste is different. Whoa, whoa. Okay. It smells sweet. Like, oh, oh, this is going to have a little sugar in it. You put it in your mouth. It is not sweet. <laughs> it's like, ugh. And then as you chew on it, it turns into like, like peanut I... butter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like salty peanut butter. Sunflowery peanut butter. What? Yeah, I could, I could eat. All I think of my expectation of them being sweet threw me off at the moment, They're like really after good. smelling them. But yeah, those are enjoyable. Peanut and hazelnut puffs, roasted peanut or hazelnut? Why not both? What if these nut puffs had healing powers? According to oh no, this is Greek. <laughs> Dioscorides. <laughs> Dioscorides. Dioscorides. A so famous. Great. No, it's not Socrates. It's Diosocrates, a famous Greek physician and author of a millennia-spanning medical journal. According to them, they do have uh, healing powers. For a nasty cough, he'd prescribe a mixture of hazelnut and honey for colds, cooked hazelnuts, and pepper. He even created a cure for baldness by smearing a paste of charred hazelnut and animal fat on receding hairlines across Greece. Good idea. These puffs might not do anything for your luscious locks or lack thereof, but with an additive crunch, they're our go-to remedy. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> sure. They're our go-to remedy for a rumbly tummy. Stack number two. Another big bag of bread chips. That looks like a bagel chip. Fine. Oh, it's also my totties. Okay, so that's like a, I guess a a Grecian this, business. This has it's been garlic. Uh, it's been in, it's been packed tightly. We it's probably been have smushed from the transport. Okay. There, there we go. That's a better look. Yeah. There we go. I like bread. Oh, it smells mildly of garlic, like a very light garlic. You know what they remind me of? Um, what are you doing? Oh, oh, that's yeah, that's good. Um, here. They remind me of the bagel-y chips you get in Chex Mix. I don't know how many of you have had Chex Mix. Holes in them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. I'd eat these. They are very cute. So small. They, do they all deliberately have a hole? Because the hole is weird. Mm -hmm. It's like not in the middle and round. Mm -hmm. And it's on the package. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. Roasted garlic bread chips. Finally, garlic bread you can snack on. Look, What's you wrong can, with that? You can already snack on garlic bread, okay? Yeah, just put some garlic bread in a thing and then eat it. You can in, snack in on your face. Garlic bread is a snack. We won't judge you. It's not a it's not a meal. I mean, you can make it a meal, it, it but is it's a, meal. a but it's a snack. It's a very yeah. This is don't be ridiculous. Uh, you probably know that garlic bread is good for your body. It's not. Uh, but did you know it's good for your soul too? That's only play. Yeah, this I don't know what is wrong with these people. Who wrote this? Let us explain. Fire. In Greece, there is a widespread belief that bad luck can be caused simply by receiving a malicious glare. Oh! 
Locals aptly called this phenomenon evil eye. Oh. Or Matty. How to protect themselves? With a special evil eye neutralizing amulet. Oh, an amulet. Garlic. Garlic! Folks keep garlic cloves in their pockets or handbags and hang them above entryways in their homes and businesses. We prefer oh. a slightly tastier tactic, munching on these extra crunchy bread chips coated in pungent garlic seasoning. What? Somebody, anybody, leave a message in the comments down below. That's if you've no... ever put garlic in your pocket to prevent people's evil eyes from getting you. <laughs> what? It prevents it, the, the evil eye because you, you're, and you're breathing on them and they're like, ah. And then they can't look at you. That's a box. Whoosh. Lokumi. Three traditional handmade prickly pear delight. Oh, it's like Turkish delight. Oh. Look, ah. Aha, there we go. It's out of focus, but you get the idea. Lumps. Don't pull it out of the back too far or else. Oh, there he goes. The, woo, it's raining sugar. I hope it's sugar. So far all I taste is sugar. Okay. Okay, so the fruit There's flavor. no fruit flavor. None. It's kind of more like soap. I didn't, I didn't even get that. I'm just getting like like a sugar jelly. Mm-hmm. And it looks like yeah, the consistency of it, the consistency of it isn't like a gummy. It's like Squishes. we've had things that are similar where it's soft and springy, but like when you actually bite on it, it just kind of gives up. <laughs> Completely covered. You can't see it on the camera, but I'm like covered in powdered sugar now. You wore black <laughs> pants and it was a mistake. <laughs> There's so much sugar in this. Prickly pear Turkish delight. Briklukomi, inspired by a cactus fruit. We know what you're thinking. Why is there Turkish delight in my grease box? What well, both countries were once part of the Ottoman Empire, so they have a lot of cuisine in common. Turkish delight, or lukomi, as it's known in Greece, is the perfect example. After spreading from Istanbul to Greece in the early 19th century, locals quickly made it their own. Take this yum. It tastes just like the fruit of the prickly pear cactus, a staple of the Aegean Islands. Because prickly pears usually covered in spines, these lukomi jellies are the safest and most delicious way to taste this iconic Greek flavor. Oh, it's little. Oh, oh, oh! Serenata finger. <laughs> Smells like chocolate. Milk chocolate. Oh, it's wafers. It's a co chocolate covered wafer. Oh, it's got a little bit of a dark chocolate swirl on top. Mmm. Nice and crisp. Is it anything other than chocolate? I'm only getting chocolate. Chocolate and wafer. Mm-hmm. Drizzled milk chocolate wafer. Mm -hmm. Reese's version of a better Kit Kat. Obsessed with wafers? Get excited! Oh, boy! Grease is where the wafers were invented. Whoa! <laughs> Yay! Back in 146 BC, Athenians cooked them by pouring batter between two hot plates. Oh. Like an ancient waffle iron and topping the finished wafers called ob obelos, obelios. Uh -huh. sure. with herbs and cheese. Mm. To see how far Greek wafers have come since then, just take a bite of this yum with four crispy wafers smothered in cocoa cream and then coated in rich chocolate and then drizzled with even more chocolate. You're basically tasting 2,000 years of innovation. Oh. Boy, it's good. That is, it was good. Oh, grape musk. Soft cookie. What must the grape do? Soft cookie. Grape must. It has to. It's not musk. It's got a soft must. cookie. That's grape that's must. A, that's what it has to do. Soft cookie. If this is not a soft thing, I will be very confused. It smells like a. You're gonna hate this. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like you're gonna hate this. It smells like a raisin uh, fig Newton kind of deal. Ooh, oh, it's a. Some... It's cake like. I'll I'll take the rest of it later. Yeah, this smells like raisin bread. But there's no actual raisin. So the thing it's that I don't like... It's just the flavor, not the right, texture. The texture is what I don't like about raisin. Are you sure? Now you'll find out. I know. I already know. Mmm. It tastes healthy. 
It tastes like it's made with like whole grain flour. It's very dry. Very dry. It's I quite like it. It's very it feels a lot like a gingerbread cookie almost. So I think it it grape must um, did everything but the cookie part. It's soft, <clears throat> but I'm not I'm not getting very much cookie. You don't have to eat that if you don't like it. It's not like I don't it like in. it. It's, it? it's kind of like, I, I, like my eyes said, "You gonna get? You gonna eat a cake?" <laughs> and my mouth was like, "Bran thing." Grape must mustok lolora cookie. It has to. Mustokolora cookie. Yes, Greek pressed grapes in a soft ring cookie. Folks don't often use the word musty to describe good things, usually basements or socks. But we found the exception. These soft, cinnamony cookies are meant to be musty. They're made with literal grape must. A thick mixture made up of the freshly pressed juices, skin, seeds, and stems of the grape. Usually prepared as the first step of winemaking. Fortunately, the must made in the northern Greek city of Kilkis doesn't get turned into wine. It's used to make this traditional mustokuloro cookie. An absolute must for any visit to Greece. Oh, a bag of something. Waves, tomato, and paprika. Ooh, so it's going to be kind of a ketchup chip. Eh? Smells kind of vinegary almost more than uh, tomato. Oh, ooh. Okay, this is good. Like, it instantly hits your tongue with this, like, how do you, it gets old. It like ages in your mouth. Oh, I don't like it. Hmm. I think I don't like it. I'm gonna have another one. I think I don't like it. It's like a salty kind of paprika, almost smoky flavor at first. And then as I chew it, it kind of starts tasting like old people. <laughs> it's like old people. No, like it's like... You're so weird. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it! Paprika and tomato potato chips. Garden fresh tomato meets smoky paprika. Blah, blah, blah. You have one person to thank for these chips. Ionis Cappadisteris. Sure. Uh, Greece's first prime minister. Oh. Convinced that potato was the key to boosting the economy. <laughs> he started giving them away for free in 1829. When the public didn't see the appeal, he hatched a new plan. He had armed guards protect the next potato shipment as it arrived in Napoleon. Locals, believing the potatoes to be valuable, started stealing them. And lo before long, the potatoes spread nationwide, countrywide. Ingenious, <laughs> right? Almost as ingenious as, say, pairing potato chips with tomato and smoky green paprika. I love, I love that. That was a good story. That I like these story. chips for the story more than anything else. If that didn't have anything to do with these particular chips, it was just about potatoes. Those potatoes coming it to Greece and growing in popularity. Story. It was a good, good potato good story. Good potato story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent potato story. Small. It's a, what? Bak baklava. Almond. Almond baklava. Almond baklava. Isn't it usually walnuts? Interesting. I like baklava. Oh, How oh, oh, are we going to eat that? It's gooey all the way down. Yes. Oh, oh wow. Gooey. It is so goopy. Okay. Um. All right. You take a bite, and I'll take a bite from the other end. <laughs> what the hell? Ow! It's really hard. Today we learned you can pack phyllo dough close together enough that it's armor. Like, I'm pretty sure a bullet would not pass through that. This is... It's almond baklava. Yep. I can kind of taste the almond. Yep. 
I mean, it's sweet. It's, um... I like baklava, but it's not light and flaky. It's, like, crazy dense. It's, like, it's like wet cardboard. I'll eat it. Like, really solid, dense, wet mm. cardboard. It's the best cardboard I've ever had. When exploring Greece, uh, there are a few things you must do. See the Parthenon, soak up the sun on a white sand beach, and try baklava. Sorry, we don't make the rules. We're just happy to abide by them. So why is baklava a must? Well, you'd be hard pressed to find a single Greek celebration, be it a wedding, holiday dinner, or birthday party, without a platter of this syrupy, centuries old sweet front and center. And it never gets boring, and there are tons of different varieties to choose from. There's kurokubinia, the itty bitty bite sized variety, katafi, the kind made with stringy shredded phyllo dough, and even charagli, which is baklava rolled up like a mini burrito. But to kick our Greek adventure into high gear, we've brought you the one and only original, flaky as ever and filled with honeyed almonds, but sh be sure to savor it. Like seeing the Parthenon or sitting on a spectacular beach, you'll never forget your first time tasting baklava. I don't remember. If that's your first time tasting baklava, go find a Greece re like a Grecian restaurant. Find a find a freaking falafel place. They'll have better baklava. <laughs> I don't remember the first time I had baklava. I don't remember the first time I had baklava either. Yep. But I there's, remember some of the earlier times of having baklava. There's a lot of lies in this book. Just, you know, putting Bargain. that out there. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're trying. They're lies. Some, I'm still happy about that potato story. Potato was pretty good. Yeah. Oh, almond shortbread. Ooh! Okay, I'm down for these. Is there more powder on the bottom of the bag? Yes. Yeah. Lots of powder. Lots and lots of powder. Apparently in Greece, it's not properly packaged. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? That's not going to work. What do you mean that's not going to work? Do you want to keep the sugar in there, or would you like more sugar on your pants? I'm, I'm ready to be completely covered. Oh, really? Look at this. Look at this. Do you see it all down across the bottom? That's just powdered there's sugar. Just sugar everywhere. Jeez, there's just so much powdered sugar. Oh, these are so soft. Oh, wow. Okay. It smells good. It has like a weird scent. That I can only like describe as kind of like plastic vanilla. What was it? Some what does it smell like to you? Coconut. Coconut. Ah. Uh, oh. Oh wow. <clears throat> That's not a cookie. It's just a powder that they smushed together. <laughs> There was no cookie there. <laughs> what are the crunchy things? Almonds. Okay. It says almond shortbread on the box. It does. Mm -hmm. And it is a shortbread. Mm -hmm. They're really sweet. Wow, is that sweet. Oh, wow. Because every time you take a bite, it's like it explodes. Like, do not breathe in while you're having this cookie. Yeah, yeah, you, you will have white lungs. lung. Oh, oh. <laughs> you have cookie lung. Full of cookie. Those are really good, though. Mm-hmm. I thought I was being careful. No. Jesus. Look at me. Hi. <laughs> I'm just going to wipe my hands on your pants. I mean, you might as at well. This point. <laughs> Almond. Okay. Kurabides. Cookies. Kurabides? Sure. All right. Reese's famously cozy Christmas time treat. That was a not normal word, not a Grecian Yes, word. but Try it was again. like, but they put it two words. It, it should be Christmas time, and they made yeah, it they, Christmas time. Christmas time. Is that's that not a word? word. It's not. Nah. And that's why it that word. messed up my brain. <laughs> if you receive the turkey box in May, then you might have think you're seeing double. But there's a subtle difference between Turkish kurabai and these Greek kurabides. <coughs> My throat is all full of powder still. Did you take a sip of anything? <coughs> no. Here, why don't I finish reading it while you drink? <laughs> their shape, according to legend... Wait, their shape is what the difference is. According to the legend, when Ottoman Turks occupied Greece in the middle of the 15th century, Kurabides cookies had to be baked in a crescent shape in an homage to the Turkish flag. So you could say that digging into these round Kurabides is a delicious way of celebrating Greeks' independence since 1821. Coincidentally, they're also their favorite way of celebrating Christmas in Greece. Ta-da! Cookies! Yeah, it felt I like... I my nose! <laughs> nice.
Jelly candy, fruit jelly. Fruit jelly! Oh, fruit jelly. Oh, Get uh, it? It's a pomegranate. It on does there. look like a pomegranate, and it's very soft. We have pomegranate flavored cocos. Jelly candy. Ooh, covered in. Oh, it's like a sugar cake. Oh, it's very soft. Squishy. Oh, oh, I love the way this smells. This reminds me of those old timey, like you get them in like the Amish stores, like little raspberries covered in like sugar pearls. If you're in, I think they're an American candy. I'm not actually sure. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Mm. 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 Really strong pomegranate flavor. It tastes nothing like pomegranate. Okay. It's got like a raspberry apple flavor to me. Okay really strong it is very yeah it's punchy it's not a subtle flavor but it didn't taste the way i think of when i think of pomegranates it tastes <clears> like <throat> fruit pomegranate jelly candy tart and sweet and exceptionally chewy pomegranate is dangerous <clears throat> at least in greek mythology oh oh that is yeah yeah as the story of goes hades god of the dead trapped persephone goddess of vegetation in the underworld Leaving Greece with no crops, Hades eventually agreed to release her, but first he fed her some pomegranate. Nice, right? Nope. Food was forbidden in the underworld, so eating the pomegranate meant Persephone had to stay there for a portion of every year. And that's how the Greeks explained the seasons. <clears throat> Fortunately for you, modern Greeks actually consider pomegra pomegranate to be good luck, as well as a must-have for weddings and New Year's Eve parties. That means you can go ahead and enjoy this juicy pomegranate jelly no strings attached. Ooh. Almond. Almond. Toffee. Gummies? No, toffee. Toffee. Okay. Ooh. It's just wrapped similarly, so I thought. Oh, it's by the same brand. Cocos. Oh, oh, it's oh, it's sticky. Very sticky toffee. If it wasn't quite so sticky, I would say it looks kind of like old school gum. Oh. Mmm. I'm definitely getting that almond scent. really subtle and mild. It's got kind of like a milk candy caramel feeling to it with a hint of almond body lotion. <laughs> it's like not almond almond. It's like a this is the Hercules artificial almond flavor body oil uh, that was promised at the beginning of the box. It's the Hercules body oil. Yeah. It's really awesome. The texture is really smooth. Very good. I think this is my favorite thing from the box. Really? Yeah. Crazy. If you gave me like a pound of those, they would be gone in like 24 hours. <laughs> All right. The texture of them is really smooth and silky. The flavor's not super overpowering. They're not like crazy in your face sweet. I could just live forever with my mouth tasting like this. I'd be okay with that. All right. Mmm. Mmm. You want to read about it as I'm oh, still right, listening right, 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 out? Right. Yeah, sure. Mmm. <clears throat> Almond milk toffees, the soft, rich, creamy treat from Athens. There's a reason the ancient Romans called almonds nut grisha, Greek nuts. If the Greeks aren't plucking almonds straight from the tree as a snack, they're savoring them at any other meal of the day. Maybe it's during breakfast of Leucomedes. A breakfast of Leucomedes, that's what it is. Tonit balls topped with ground almonds. An afternoon appetizer of scrodalia, creamy. Scrodalia, not scro anything. There's the R in the, that mix. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Creamy almond and garlic dip, or a sweet dessert of baklava, like the one in your box. Even candies get the almond treatment, so feel free to eat these chewy yums any time of the day. Really, you'd only be immersing yourself deeper in the local cult culture. Mm. Was there, there was nothing gross. I was just thinking the same thing you yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the, um... I you like, like the, those garlic bagel chips Those things? are pretty good. I don't know if they're my favorite. Well, why? I think the... The the, the, the stupid powdery things is which is why I'm covered Oh, in. the almond all, shortbread all cookies. Both of those. Both of the powdery things. Both the powdery things you liked. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Mm. Like sugar. Mmm. Okay. I, yeah, I like the almond one. And then, uh, what was your least favorite? It's got to be between the baklava and the chips. 
Which chips? The tomato ones? The tomato ones, ones yeah. They Everybody leave a comment down below on what yours was. If they, if they ate it. If they, if they ate them. Or if you live in Greece and you've had these before or something. Yeah, because they, they're just um, experiencing it through us. Yeah, I think my least favorite thing was those uh, cactus pear Turkish delight things. Really? Yeah, those I mean, like, they weren't like so, the okay. grossest, but they, they were just kind of, uh. Yeah, so that, yeah. I'd can't... rather eat almost anything else in the bag. There's no. nothing in here that I wouldn't consume all of. Yeah, this isn't like those truffle chips that we were like, oh, don't even open the bag near me. <laughs> That's the end um, of the video. That is, yes. Uh, thank you guys for joining us here on YouTube to taste these tasty tastes with us. Oh, finger guns. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, too. <laughs> but uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, leave a comment down below and we will read it and, and try to reply back because I do that sometimes. And, uh, happy snacking. Are you going to participate at all or are you just going to glare?